Good evening and welcome to the Graduation and Beyond, your college and career plans webinar. My name is Nick Boudre, the Supervisor of Career and College Programs from St. Clair County, Eresa, and I'll be your host this evening for this event. Tonight, we kick off the 2022 Spring Series focusing on transitioning the graduating class of 2022 seniors career and college plans throughout the spring and summer and into next fall. We know that each senior and family has a unique path and plan to achieve their future career and college goals and ultimately land a career in the highest in demand, highest paying industries. As always, our format's gonna be a 30 to 40 minute conversation with our panelists in a Q&A segment where the audience can ask questions at the chat feature, feature at the bottom of your screen. We're gonna have a great conversation with a panel, a panel of current college students discussing their last days in high school, life after high school graduation, and then how they continued their success into a post-secondary education or training program. Well, please welcome our first guest, Cassie Gayton. Uh, Cassie is a freshman at Grand Valley State University after graduating last spring from Marine City High School. Cassie also was a participant on the panel uh, last spring helping um, everybody get ready for high school, our current uh, ninth grade class. So thank you again for joining us. Yes, of course, I'm glad to be here. Well, Cassie, kick us off by taking us a little bit, you know, after graduation from Marine City High School, what led you to Grand Valley State University? So, um, I really wanted to go to Grand Valley since I was like a sophomore because I visited um, once and I came and saw a friend and just like saw, seeing how she lived and looking back on it, it was definitely probably just the whole college experience that I really liked. But for some reason, I just kind of got this attachment to Grand Valley and I did tour other schools, like a lot of other schools. I applied a lot of other places, but everything just kept leading me back to Grand Valley. Like I knew it was the one. So that's what really like drew me here. Like I just had a feeling that I needed to go here and I'm really glad I did. Oh, that's great. So, uh, and, and Grand Valley is such a great school and you and I've talked numerous times when you were at Marine City and, and, and now, um, what career interest brought you to Grand Valley and what program are you in or what are you majoring in? So my current major is nursing. So I'm a pre-nursing student. So I'm finishing up my prerequisites this year. And then in the fall, I take co-requisites, which basically means I'm going to be applying to the program at the same time as taking those classes. So I need it for the program, but I apply at the same time. And so the nursing program at Grand Valley is a secondary um, program. So I applied to get into Grand Valley um, last year, and then I'll apply for the nursing program in the, like this upcoming fall. And I know that Grand Valley has a amazing nursing program, but I did not think I was going to do nursing at all. So I didn't choose Grand Valley because of the nursing program, but it honestly worked out in my favor that I did because it does have like a very good nursing program. Very good. Um, well, has it always been, I mentioned it wasn't nursing, um, the reason that you went to Grand Valley. Were you considering other careers prior to deciding on nursing itself? Yeah, I um, actually applied um, to Grand Valley as a pre-med student. So I, want, I really wanted to go to medical school. And then I ended up switching my major when I registered for classes, like my first time around. Um, it was actually this panel last year that made me change my major. Like that's when I was like, okay, I'm going into nursing. Well, we always appreciate the plug, um, but you were always on all of our events, and that's why I thank you so much for that. Um, well, and you mentioned nursing, and, and my next question was going to be around uh, the importance of of what you know your classes, and mm -hmm. you're gonna you're gonna apply next fall to the nursing program, yeah. And and we'll get to that point a little bit about why it's important to have such a you know first a great first year, and that's a that's one of the reasons, but. What are your classes like that you're taking your first year in comparison to um, high school? So this year, I am actually in the Honors College here at Grand Valley. So my classes look a little different from like typical like students who aren't in the Honors College. Um, for most people, you take like your gen eds like that everyone talks about, like your writing class, your 
you know, elective where you can do underwater snow ski. I don't know. Like it's, <laughs> but I don't have to do that. Um, which, you know, has its pros and cons. So I'm actually in my honors class that's year round and that's called design thinking, which is really cool. And then, so that kind of has nothing to do with my major at all, which is nice because all my other classes are chemistry, biology, organic chemistry, um, anatomy and physiology, and it's kind of all the same structure. So it's nice to have a break from that. Um, but it's definitely, so for the secondary program, I have to complete those classes before getting into the program. So, um, which is a lot of times you have to do depending on your major, like you apply for a secondary program at your school, or, you know, you have the prereqs to get into your specific college. So, um, you know, it's just very based on your interests, which is nice. Very good. Did you take any AP or dual, enroll, dual enrollment classes when you were at Marine City? Yeah, I took both. Um, so I took AP Bio and AP Calculus my senior year. And those definitely helped a lot because a lot of the content is the same. So unfortunately, I didn't pass my AP Bio test, which I was really bummed about. But when I took the introductory bio class here at Grand Valley, it was a lot of the same content. And so I kind of really solidified my knowledge on it, which was really nice. And I felt like I had an easier time in the class than a lot of other people. And dual enrollment classes really helped because it gives you the structure of what an actual college class is like. Like it's, it's the same, even if it's online. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about that structure. Um, so we're going to touch on both of those, like an AP class, the content and then dual enrollment. So what's the content that's very similar to what you had in high school? I mean, I know it's not the exact same class, but then also with the dual enrollment, what's a structure that was familiar to you? So, um, here I know probably a lot of people tell you it's so nice because you don't have the seven hour day like you do in high school and you just go and you sit through your class every single day, like repeat after repeat. It depends on your class and how you schedule it, but you can have it every other day. You can have it once a week, which is so nice. And I know for dual enrollment, like um, you work on it like maybe three times a week and then you're done. You can do it, you know, when you want. And that's kind of how it is for college too. Like I go to class like three times a week or twice a week, which that structure is very nice for me because it kind of gives your brain a break and you can work on like whatever you want, like whenever you want. That's perfect. And the content of the AP classes and here, you're pretty heavy with some classes that may have some labs. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So AP bio, I thought was definitely very similar. Um, it's definitely fast paced. You learn a lot on your own, which in high school you hear it a lot, but you don't really want to think it's true, but you have to do a lot on your own. Um, but it just helps. It goes in your favor when you like read the book or do the extra practice. So, um, it's a lot kind of self-motivating yourself to want to learn about this. Um, and I know it's different for everyone. Like I took, you know, I took AP Calc and AP Gov, which I'm never going to have to take Calc or government ever again. So I can't really comment on those classes, but with bio, and language, um, you know, it's kind of doing the same thing and how the teachers teach you is also how your professors will teach you, which is definitely something you have to adjust to. So I know sometimes I got frustrated with my AP bio teacher because I was like, I don't, I feel like I'm not learning anything in your class, which it, that's not a hit on him. It's he's teaching us at all, like how to understand college level um, assignments by teaching at a college level, like teaching level. I don't know if that makes sense, but no, that's make, the best it answer. makes total sense. And, and I really am glad that you shared that because it's, it's really important that, um, you know, with AP classes and dual enrollment classes, you know, there are a lot of things, you know, dual enrollment, obviously that you're at a college and you're taking a college course, but you know, what you just mentioned is, is why it's very important to not only, you know, get those credits possibly through an AP class, but you're all preparing for after life after high school and into college and taking a college level course um, for very exactly. transitions. So it's not, you know, a night and day difference. So thank mm -hmm. you for sharing that. Um, well, let's get off of the classwork a little bit and talk just about college life 
and making that transition. Um, you know, what was it like for you? Did you join any clubs, any organizations, uh, societies your first year? Yeah, I um, came to Grand Valley. I knew a couple people, but not like any super close friends. So I was like, oh, man, I'm going to have to make some friends. So um, I was in the Honors College, which was nice because we had like an orientation where we got to meet other Honors College people like the first like right off the get go. Um, but I really wanted to get involved on campus because I was super involved in high school and that was really nice. But as you guys know, Marine City High School is pretty small. So I knew everyone from kindergarten. So making new friends was definitely a challenge. So I joined um, a couple different clubs just based on interest, which was really cool because I don't think I would have ever met those people if I didn't join the clubs. And most of the people in the clubs, I have like the same exact interests with because you obviously join a club you're interested in. And I'm in mostly like academic clubs, but um, it's still really nice having those people that you can count on or even like compare your homework with and, you know, the same stresses. It's nice to have those people that, you know, you're similar to. Well, and that's really leading to our next few questions here, Cassie. You know, what really surprised you the most your first year, good or bad? Yeah, I believe when we were talking about this earlier, I told you how it surprised me how easy it is to find friends and you like make your friend group so fast and some of the friends will stick and some of them won't, but you will always have friends. And that was definitely one of my biggest like concerns going into college. I thought it was going to be so hard to make friends and nobody was going to like me, but it is so easy. And I did rush a sorority. I don't know if anyone is interested in doing that, but um, I ended up not liking it, but I live with three other girls that are all still in their sororities. And I know that they found people in every one of their sororities that, um, you know, really relate to them. So I'm very happy for them, but it was just wasn't for me. So I think the more things that you try out, the easier it is to find people that you really click with. And that's where making friends gets really easy. In the next two, we'll go right along with that question, you know, is because that's great advice, you know, for, for students that are, are going away and may not know people or may have the same kind of, you know, thoughts or concerns. Mm -hmm. um, what advice would you give incoming uh, students, not only in terms of, you know, maybe reaching out and meeting new friends, new people, new connections, new organizations, but also in terms of good habits to, to develop? Um, so you have a successful, not only first year, but into your third, your second, third, and fourth year. Um, it definitely would be like getting involved, but I feel like everyone says that. So I would also say making like a structure. So you will find out very quickly that your weeks will look exactly the same, like because your classes go by week now and not by day. So your weeks will look the same structure wise and you'll end up getting lunch the same time on Tuesdays, every single Tuesday. So I also say make your schedule around that. Say if you don't, if your class doesn't start till 1 p.m. on Tuesday, wake up and be productive in the morning and get all your homework done on Tuesday morning. And I think that is so beneficial because you can get so lost in the social aspect of college because it's just it's a great time. But then the work just starts to pile up. So I just say, make sure you be productive. And also, don't be afraid to eat in the dining hall alone. That was the best advice I ever got. <laughs> well, that, that, that's great, Cassidy. I, 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 I really appreciate that. Well, let's go to the best advice, Cassie, that you would give, you know, a senior right now. They got about two months until, you know, graduation uh, day. Mm -hmm. So what advice would you give them, you know, as they finish up their high school year and then maybe pursue going to a college like Grand Valley next fall? Yeah, I would just say make sure you really cherish these last two months like they are going to fly. And I, I did exactly that. I kind of slowed down my whole life. I knew that it was coming to an end. It was just going to 360. So enjoy and savor everything you have going on right now and all of your friends because everyone is about to get very different priorities, but also make sure that you are still thinking about your future and like what you have like going on in the future. Because if I 
didn't start packing for college when I did, which I started packing in like July, maybe like early July, I would have been so stressed out and I would have done it the week before, but you need a lot, but also yeah, just saving your time, but also keep looking ahead, but don't stress yourself out too much because it'll, it all happens for a reason and you'll get the hang of it. Well, thank you so much. We'll come back to Cassie here in a little bit during a question and answer period, because I'm sure we're going to have uh, some great questions to ask you um, in terms of uh, going to college, possibly even Grand Valley. So I, you know, some points that, that Cassie made that were so great where, you know, it, it's a, it's a whole process. If we're not here tonight just to talk about, um, you know, applications or, you know, checklists to do and, and, and enrolling, you know, the steps to take, you know, it's a whole process. There's a lot of things to look at. There's a lot of things to consider from the social side of things, joining clubs and organizations to a point that she made too about structure and time management. Um, you know, it's an, it's a, it's going to be a change from your high school classes and your high school schedule. And, and in Cassie's um, um, place, of where she's at her freshman year at Grand Valley that she wants to apply to the nursing college and the nursing program. And that's why that's really important to make the smooth transition to um, from her first year to her second year. So uh, without further ado, we're gonna move right to our panel here. Um, please welcome our, our second guest uh, is a recent grad um, from East China uh, School District as well. I uh, went to Bria Dove, went to St. Clair High School, as well as St. Clair Tech Center and, and graduated last spring and is currently a freshman at the Culinary Institute of Michigan. Bria, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Hi, thank you for having me. Of course. Um, so a lot of what Cassie talked about, we're going to talk about not only your experiences at uh, St. Clair High School in, in Tech, but then we're going to roll right into your, your freshman year um, at the uh, Culinary Institute of Michigan. So take us back, um, you're at St. Clair uh, High School. Um, what program did you decide to go and study at Tech? So at Tech, I was in the Culinary Arts program there. Very good, and what did you do to that program specifically? I'm sorry, what was that? No, that's okay. What made you choose uh, that program? I know they have a lot of great programs that are out there. And, you know, that's a big jump for, for uh, students in high school to uh, decide to go out and, and take, uh, you know, junior and senior year and programs out there at Tech. Yeah, so it would have been my sophomore year. I went to one of the Tech open houses. And that was really where like I fell in love with the kitchen. I went into it not wanting to go to tech and not wanting to, you know, dedicate those those two years to something, but I love it. And I would do it again in a heartbeat. Very good. So, you know, and you and I talked about this when we were preparing for the tonight's panel uh, discussion, you know, tech has a tremendous programs and a lot of, um, you know, career-based certifications and credentials that you get from there that you can enter right into the workforce. But you decided to continue your education in the field that you studied beyond high school graduation. Talk to us about that decision when you made that. So I definitely appreciate my time at Tech. Like I have my serve safe and um, other like, like I got gen eds, I guess, that kind of thing way from my degree. But um, what really made me wanna pursue culinary further was I, I still have the passion for it. And so it's considered a trade and with trades you like gain experience. And so I wanna cook and I wanna do it well, I guess is my motto behind it. And um, I just have the passion, I guess. Well, I, yeah, and I think that's such a great point that you just made was that, you know, it is considered a technical you know, career and, and it is a trade. And so much like a college or a, a four-year university or college, did you have to apply to the Culinary Institution of Michigan your senior year? Yeah. So I, I actually applied to a couple of culinary schools. And um, yeah, so it's just like applying to any other college. You know, you have to put in your SAT scores and like choose your housing or what you want to do, that kind of thing. Okay. Good. Well, let's get right into it. How's your how's your first year going then? My first year is going good. Super busy, but I love every minute of it. It's so much fun. 
Tell us a little bit about what classes that you're taking. Well, you know, in what you're majoring in, what you're, you're, special, you're specializing in. So I'm majoring in baking and pastry. And um, so my classes right now, I have, so actually, so I'm pursuing a, the culinary career, but um, I'll actually get my degree out of it too. So I have, right now I'm taking some of my gen eds to get them out of the way. And then I also have like a nutritional baking class and a product ID. And so a bunch of classes were like, I feel like if you think like, oh, you're going to culinary school, you're just in the kitchen all day. Like there's some times where I'm in a lecture class. So there's some times where, yeah, I'm in a lab class for five hours or, um, but it has like the college aspect, but also the kitchen side of it too. Okay. I know this question, but I'll ask it for the audience. So you said you're going to get your degree. What degree are you going to get after you graduate from that program? So I have two years at the culinary school and I'll get my degree in applied science. And I think that's something a lot lot of people know. So that is an associate's degree in applied science. So you mentioned gen eds and Cassie did the same thing. What gen general education uh, courses are you taking right now? So right now, I just finished up taking quantitative literacy. That wasn't fun. (laughs) (laughs) And then I had, oh, I had um, English, a composition class. I'll take a psychology class. And then through the tech center, I got a couple classes waived. I got a couple um, scientific math classes waived and it's some English. So so it's just, it's just not all cooking all day, every day. no. There's definitely some like ho- heavy homework nights and stuff like that. But let's talk about the cooking. And I think this is, you know, you and I had a great conversation around this. So what are those classes like and, and how do they compare to what you learned at tech? So at the culinary school, we, we call them lab classes, I guess, because all the kitchens are called labs there. But um, so each lab class is five hours and, um, they're very similar to what we did at the tech center. Um, Just a lot more fast paced. As soon as you're supposed to get to class 10 minutes early and you spend those five hours just on the go. And um, at the Culinary Institute of Michigan, we have a restaurant there, courses. And um, so some of the classes you actually make products for the restaurant. And so everything, everything you make, whether it's something you're learning for the first time or something you're doing um, again to master it, it is always expected to be at a good quality. So there you really learn like what it takes to work in the industry and the level of um, the level your product needs to be at in order to sell. Well, what's your favorite thing to make? I know this wasn't a, a uh, canned question that we were talked about, but what are, what's one of your favorite things to cook or make or, or you enjoy doing on your program? My favorite thing to make probably is pies. I, and at the tech center, I was on their competition team. And for the life of me, I could not make a pie. And so my chef at the tech center sat me down and we figured it out. And now they're my favorite thing to make to this day. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much for sharing that. So after you graduate in a couple of years, you know, this is your first year. And, and after next year, you'll graduate with your degree. You know, what do your future career goals look like after graduation? So after graduation, which I'll, I'll be done in a year from now, um, I'm looking, so like I was saying, it's a trade. So I'll work around for a little bit. I want to look into possibly working at a couple hotels and just ex- exploring the industry a little bit and finding where I want to specialize. And then after that, I'd like to open my own cafe, have like a cafe bakery type of thing. That's great. And do you feel that, you know, not only throughout high school, but then your tech program and where you're at now that, you know, it's really providing you with a well-rounded, not only education, but, you know, experience that can help, you know, prepare you for that career? Yeah, I feel like, like the end of high school and the first couple of years, what you do after high school really just um, like put tools in your toolbox, you know, who knows, maybe in 20 years, I'll be a teacher or I'll do this and I won't be in a kitchen at all. 
but I'll be able to go back on my degree and I'll be able to reference the things I learned in high school. And so right now it's just building all, um, building all the experience for later. That's great. I kind of, you know, kind of said it better myself. That that's some really great advice for you know students that are about to graduate from high school. And so I'll follow that up with my last question, just for our little segment here, um, is you know what what advice would you give a a senior from the class of 2022 that's either at St. Clair High School or in a tech program that is going to be entering their first year in college or a trade school or or at a community college. Um, my best piece of advice would probably be just to breathe a little bit. Cause I mean, like you're graduating in about two months and a lot of people are going to have their opinions about what you should do with the rest of your life and how you should do it. But I mean, only, you know, what's best for you. So I would say just go full, fro- go full throttle with it and just embrace the opportunities that you have. All right. Thank you so much, Bree. What a great uh, segment they're talking about, not only St. Clair Tech and St. Clair High School, but also the Culinary Institute of Michigan and in, in pursuing uh, a degree in, in that trade school. You know, some some points uh, that Bria really made that I think I love to just to review again are, you know, the you know, a lot of interest around trades right now, technical education and in, in pursuing, you know, um, your own path after high school graduation, but it does lead to some form of education and or formal training of a credential or a uh, certificate. And, and I think that's really important to understand that the highest paying, highest in demand jobs right now requires some level of that after high school graduation. But I think one of the best points that she just made was just take a breath breathe and enjoy the moment because it's been a a long four years for you, especially after the last two. Uh, There's been a lot of challenges, but you guys have made it to high school graduation and it's time to celebrate here in about a month or so. Well, let's move on to our third guest. Um, It's coming to us again. I was a former uh, panelist last year um, on our winter series of 2021. Um, Please welcome um, Olivia May. Um, Olivia is a junior at uh, Central Michigan uh, University. She's a graduate from Marysville High School and um, also attended SC4, which is St. Clair County Community College, um, prior to going to Central Michigan. So thank you so much for joining us again, Olivia. Welcome back. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be back. Well, good. Thank you so much. Um, Well, let's start back at Marysville. Um, you were getting ready for graduation. What led you to uh, attend SC4? Um, so the initial reason that I wanted to go to SC4 was to actually like, to play basketball. Um, and I also was suggested to do like the Michigan transfer agreement when I was there, um, just to get my general education classes out of the way. So if you're not familiar with that, it's like 30 credits of just your basic level classes that you need before you can basically get into your program. Um, that actually helped me out a lot because then I transferred here to Central Michigan. And a lot of those classes um, were accepted because most they're mostly accepted by all Michigan colleges. And then I was able to get right into the courses for my major. So how long were you at uh, SC4? I was only there for one year because I wanted to go into education and I took all the prerequisites that I could. um, So they didn't have any more courses that I could take. Oh, very good. So it took advantage and a lot of students, you know, what a tremendous community college that we have right here in our neighborhood in St. Clair County. But a lot of students, I think, don't realize that uh, um, that, you know, it is a two year uh, a college that you can get an associate's degree. But there's other credentials and certifications that you can get, you know, that are, don't require full two years. But what you just mentioned, we talked about this last winter when you're on our event. You know, you had a plan for a one year a stint at the community college, get your prereqs, and then transfer those over to the, a university, which we do know that cost, it's cost effective, and you were still um, living at home, correct? Yeah, it was, it saved me a lot of money. I would definitely suggest looking into that, even if you're not taking them um, in the fall, like if you're going away right away, look into summer classes, because you can save a bunch of money and knock some of the prerequisites out before you get to college. And I would just make sure you like look and make sure that they transfer because you wouldn't want to take them and them, them not transfer over. But yeah, definitely look into that. 
Well, that's a that's a great advice. Thank you so much, Olivia, for sharing that. It's not even in our question, so it just came to my mind. Yes, yeah, wonderful. Um, well, let's talk a little bit. You already mentioned what you're majoring in. Um, tell us how you became interested in that, and a little bit more about your major at CMU. Yeah, so I said I'm majoring in education. So I'm actually double majoring in health and physical education, and the initial. Initially, I didn't intend to double major. I was going to have like a major and then a minor and my minor was going to be physical education. But how Central does it is their PE and health program is combined. So it saves you on like a couple of those classes that would double up. You can just take it all at once. So it was just the perfect fit for me. And, and, and I'm going to ask you this too, is, you know, you seem very strategic and intentional about going to SC4 in the classes and looking at that that uh, transfer agreement. And then even right now of, of doing a double major versus one major, you know, how did you do that? Who did you go to to find that out? Or where did you find that information? Um, so I actually got in contact with the education program and they put me in touch with uh, CMU. She's now a CMU alum, but she was actually in the program, program doing her student teaching. So she like talked me through everything. She told me all the ins and outs. Um, so that was extremely helpful that I had somebody to lean on, even through like my process of getting there. Like she would reach out when I first got here, ask me if I needed any help. Um, so it was just a big help on my, her end for me. Very good. Well, let's get in. We're going to get into the class a little bit here. Cassie and Bria both talked about what it's like for their day to day in their programs and, and just day to day in college classes. What's it like for you at Central Michigan? Yeah, so it's a little bit different for me because now I'm in my actual program, so I'm not taking the gen ed classes again. Um, within the education, uh, it's something new every day, which I like because it keeps me on my toes. Um, I have to be extremely creative um, to think on my feet because in the classroom, a lot of kids will ask the most bizarre like questions. And I don't. Sometimes I don't know how to answer it, but you have to fake it till you make it. Yes. Um, in the classroom, a lot of my time has been spent like lesson planning, which has been crazy because you don't think about all the stuff that goes into what your teachers are teaching you. You just think they come to school and know what they're doing. No, it takes hours of planning. And then also on top of all the schoolwork that I have, um, I'm traveling to multiple different schools like three days a week uh, to be able to actually teach by myself in the classroom. And then that leads me right to the next topic that I want to talk about, um, field work and observation hours. You know, there's going to be a lot of seniors that are interested in the audience in pursuing a career in education. Um, last time you're on our webinar, we talked about the observation hours, observation hours, and now you're doing a second round. Tell us about both of those and what that means for your major. Um, so this year to last year is actually quite a bit different. We weren't able to get out as much last year as we are this year. Um, so basically when we go to the schools, it starts off, we were observing and then now we're actually like in the classroom teaching the lessons on our own, which is nice. Um, I'm traveling to three different schools in the area, which are all about 30 minutes away. So it's kind of a lot. So like balancing schoolwork, social life, field work has been a lot, but it's something I won't ever take for granted because it's given me like great experiences. I would never expect some of the things um, that come up in the classroom to happen like as CMU in my classroom with my peers. Like it's just a complete different feel actually being able to work with the students. Well, I think you're, you're giving a great example right now, Olivia, of, of what, uh, you know, when I was graduating high school, I wasn't very familiar with what the classes or the courses looked like in college, whether it's education, you know, or health careers, engineering at the Culinary Institution of Michigan. Um, and, the, and that program is that you just don't sit and get you know, like you do in high school and, you know, sit in a class, move from class to class that you either have, you know, real life work experience, internships, apprentice, you know, you're going out into the field, you're doing labs, you're doing clinicals. And what you're talking about right now is almost it's getting you closer to your student teaching. You're actually teaching lessons to students in local schools. Um, and how do you balance that? You know, and also that that may create a little bit of anxiety or question for, for people that are heading off to these programs is how do you balance the homework and a classroom work with going out and actually doing the profession that you're preparing for in the career that you're hoping to pursue? Yeah, so that's actually a really good question. Um, it does take a lot of adjusting. Like for me, 
it was really eye opening when I couldn't go home and like sit down for a minute. Like I would go from school, I'd get done at like two and then I'd have to head right to the schools to finish my lessons. The way that I balance it is that in between my classes, I'll try to get all my homework done. Um, like if I have even 20 minutes, I won't sit on my phone. Like I will sit down, open my laptop, do my homework. So that way, after I get home from the schools, like teaching, I'll have time to hang out with my friends because it will get overwhelming. Like your friends are all going to be going out and doing stuff if they're not in a field that requires field hours. Um, and you'll have like the fear of missing out. But in the end, like it's going to be worth it. Um, you're going to get great experience that's going to lead you to be the best you can be. Well, you're getting close to that senior year and graduation coming up. What's it look like next fall and the following winter semester? Yeah, so next fall will be my final um, hurrah at Central on campus. Um, so I'll be wrapping all of my classes up that I need to finish like my major. And then in the winter, I'm moving back home and I'm going to start my student teaching. Very good. And, and that's going to be back here in St. Clair County, correct? Yeah, I don't have my placement yet, but hopefully somewhere in the area. Very good. And what's your certification going to be in, in education? It's going to be health and physical education, um, secondary health, and then K through 12 physical education. Very good. And, and just for the audience, so that means that you can teach um, those grade levels, correct? Yeah. So secondary would be high school and then, or middle school and high school, and then K through 12 is all levels. Very good. Well, let's, uh, let's get to the, the, one of the best questions that I love asking the panelists that I have this evening is you already given a lot of advice that can help seniors and their families, um, you know, prepare for graduation and then moving on after high school. But with you being a junior right now, you know, tell the, you know, the audience a little bit about, you know, what's important about the first two years of college as you're a junior and you're moving to your senior year and, and soon to be graduation and then to your dream career? Yeah. Um, the first two years, I honestly think are the most important. You really have to buckle down and switch your mind from like high school to college. It's not, oh, I'll do my homework in my free time, like during school, like during another class. No, you're constantly on the go. So it is a huge change. Um, I would suggest that you just get a planner, figure out how you're going to do that, and also get your general education classes out of the way. I know that everyone has said that, but it is seriously one of the best things you could do because then once you get to like your junior year and even the end of your sophomore year, you're able to just jump right into your program and not have to worry about going to your writing class. You can solely focus on what you want to do, which honestly is more fun because you're in the classes that you love. All right. Well, thank you so much. And, you know, I, I think that's such a great um, some advice that you gave. And, and I, I was actually taking notes when you were writing there, Olivia, um, you know, the gen ed classes. And we talked about how important those are and get those out of the way because you're going to be moving on to your program specific classes and the workload's going to increase because it's, it's getting you ready for that career. You know, taking advantage of the summer that's coming up, you know, that's that really isn't on the mind of a lot of seniors right now as they finish up high school. You know, they are looking at just getting to graduation. But if you take advantage of the summer, not only taking classes, but maybe starting to prepare for, um, you know, moving in like Cassie talked about or starting to get your yourself ready for college, you're going to make that seamless transition. And then once again, the workload, time management making sure that you're not only you have a successful first year, but a first couple, two to three years leading to your senior year and graduation. So thank you so much, Olivia. We'll come back to you in the question and answer period um, here in a little bit. I'm sure we're going to have some great questions for you about Central Michigan, your education program. Um, next up, we also have a returning guest coming to us from um, one of our pre previous webinars that Olivia was on. Uh, we have Josh Schweighoffer. Um, who is a junior at, at the University of Michigan um, and also a graduate from uh, Marysville High School. Josh, how are you doing this evening? Welcome back. Good. How's it going? It's great. Uh, thanks again for joining us. Let's mm -hmm. jump right into it. We're having a great conversation and let's keep it going. Um, what led you to U of M after graduating from Marysville High School? So I would say the biggest driving factor is that my two favorite or best performing subjects in high school were math and science and physics and that sort of realm. And so 
U of M having the reputation for that engineering school, as well as it being like in state was probably like, it couldn't have been a clear like choice for like what I wanted, at least for my path. And I've also, I've been a Michigan fan, like my whole life growing up. So it was sort of those three big things sort of guided me towards it being my first choice. Okay. Very good. So you applied, you got in. Um, let's talk a little bit about your major and what you're majoring in and then really when and how you declared that major. Yeah. So my major right now is civil engineering and I declared the winter, the very end of the winter term of my freshman year. So it was as soon as we got sent home for COVID, I declared like a week after we got back home. And what helped you, helped you make that decision? Because I think, and I, I, you and I talked about this on the previous webinar, we talked about it getting ready for tonight was, you know, a lot of seniors, you know, think that they had to declare it right away. And Olivia already talked about that. Cassie already talked about that. Bria talked about that. And you have a, you have an idea and an interest and a focus, but eventually you're going to make that, uh, you're going to declare a major. When did you do that? What, how, how, what helped you with making that decision? Um, I think the thing that helped me the most was setting up meetings with alumni. Um, I know at least at U of M, the department that they have for undergraduate research or resources, there's a whole network on like, we use a web website called Handshake where you can connect sort of with alumni and just sit down for like 15, 20 minute coffee chats with them. And really coming into college, I didn't know what civil engineering was. Um, I just had assumed that I was going to do mechanical because it was just such a general um, engineering field to go into, but definitely doing that. Additionally, my freshman year, there was a one credit mini course that allowed us to discover every um, sort of major within the engineering department. So utilizing the resources that you have and doing a lot of Google searches and setting up meetings with um, sort of not even alumni, if you need to go to advisors, they're big help to sort of just, you tell them what you're feeling and they're really good at helping you um, find a path. And then I don't want to overuse this statement, but it's a process and it's a process that you've been going through, not only when you were in high school, but when you were applying to colleges and universities and as a process, your first year was so now let's talk a little bit about that first year, what you learned, what went well, and what didn't go well. Um, Josh, you know, you're a junior now, but let's get back and, and think about you making that transition. Yeah. So my first year was kind of hectic and crazy. Um, I remember going to Festival as soon as I got there, because when they tell you when you go there for your orientation, they're like, you know, try and join all the clubs you can, like find what your right fit is. And so I was joining as many, like I joined a build team. I joined some other clubs. I joined like a club sport team just to try out. And it ended up being a lot because I had not really, I was sort of underestimating what the workload was going to be like in college. And so I sort of had to sprawl against that. And actually by the end of my freshman year, every group that I ended up joining initially, I ended up dropping, which is totally fine because sometimes things aren't always going to work out the first time. Like I said, I went into mechanical engineering, joined an electric motorcycle team, thought it was the coolest thing going in. A week later, I thought it was the most boring thing that I could have gone to for three hours a week. So um, yeah, it was pretty crazy starting out because my scheduling, I found out that kids come to college with a lot more credits than I did. And so my scheduling appointment for my classes is based on how many credits I had. And so I was bottom of the totem pole and all of the classes that kids were trying to balance with their hard classes, like some of the gen eds, I sort of didn't have the opportunity to. So I took most of my hard classes freshman year and it really was sort of an eye opener for me because it forced me to sort of adapt how I looked at education and how I was going to like get through these classes. So Sort of a jump off the deep end um, first year, but I'm definitely glad that I was able to get through it because it's taught me a lot up to this point so far. Well, Josh, let's let's stay on that topic a little bit because Olivia just talked about that with her gen eds at SC4 and the importance of getting those gen eds done, those general education courses, getting them done, but the importance of building 
your so-called resume to get into your program. So you didn't get to take those your first year and you were right into your major, correct? Yeah. So most of my classes that I took freshman year were all like calculus classes or physics classes that sort of pertain towards engineering. Okay. And so, and I'm assuming you would then probably give the advice or at least tell a, a graduating senior now is to take a look at that, you know, find a balance. Is that what you're saying? Find a balance of your gen eds and don't jump right into your major. Yeah, definitely. Like make sure because going into it is a big switch from high school. I know everybody on the panel has said it so far, but the structure is nothing that we've experienced in high school before. And so definitely being able to ease into that freshman year um, makes it a lot easier by balancing it out with maybe a class that, not that you don't care as much about, but just doesn't put a lot of stress on you. And so definitely try and maybe I would say ease into it first semester. And then, you know, you can figure out what works for you and what doesn't. Yeah. And I think it's a great point too. And I think there's a lot of, of, of things to consider, you know, um, the program that you're going to go into, you know, if you can take certain classes, what classes are offered, you know, that's another thing too, that, um, you know, misconception that all the classes are offered all the time in every semester. And that's really not the, the, the point in college, is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and some are offered in the spring, some in the summer, some in the fall, some in the winter. So, well, let's uh, fast forward then a little bit. And, and much of like Olivia talked about, you got through, you know, your freshman and, and your uh, sophomore year and now into your junior year. And uh, you have an upcoming internship this summer, but you've already had one. Tell us a little bit about both of them and how they're alike and how they're different. Yeah. So as a civil engineer, my main focus right now is construction management. So basically everything that goes on behind jobs that isn't the physical labor of it. Um, and so last summer I had a job, my position was called a project engineers intern. And so basically when a job wants to get done, companies who want something built will go to these pro or project management companies and construction management companies and ask them to do all of the scheduling, all of the cost estimations, all of the sort of stuff that has to go on with the contract, finding, um, trades that'll work on the project. And so my position there was sort of working directly with the project manager as sort of an assistant. So when stuff would need to get done, um, it would, he would come to me and ask like, you know, can you verify these set of blueprints or drawings are what is actually going to be out in the field. And so smaller stuff like that, the jobs there were sort of, um, I would say like anywhere from a hundred thousand to $30 million jobs. And so this summer, I'm sort of taking another step into being a project engineer just fully on the job site. And so last summer, I was more in the office working on the computer and in more meetings. This summer, I'm going to be verifying everything with people in the office on the job site. And so I'm going to be working out in Wisconsin on the job site full time. And that's basically day in, day out, going in, making sure that stuff's staying up to date as far as scheduling goes, if stuff starts to break or someone needs somebody to blame, I'm going to be the one that's there to sort of figure <laughs> it out and help out. Um, but yeah. And I kind of like it because a lot of people have the misconception that everybody who goes into engineering is just a huge nerd who doesn't want to talk to anybody or do anything. But I feel like with construction management, you sort of have this aspect where you're more working with people with an engineering background. And Josh, you made a great point, and we're at, that leads me to my next question because we talked about this on the last webinar as well. Um, you know, what are you know you're in the, your program pretty heavily right now, and with these internships and and the responsibilities that you're taking on just as a college student already before you graduate. You know, what are your classes like, and you know what what does that workload look like, and how do you balance that as you're preparing for this internship coming up this summer? Yeah, so I would say definitely um, something that was completely different than high school that has taken up a lot of my time, especially this year and last year compared to freshman year, is labs. Um, personally, in engineering courses, every single course that I take is going to have a lab to it, which means that basically you take like the stuff that you go to class for. And then you go to a separate room or a part of campus and you sort of apply that in a physical sense. 
Um, those I think to me were the biggest part of classes because a, you work with a team pretty much every time. I can't remember a time that I've ever done a lab by myself um, or at least without collaboration of some sort. So that definitely helps out a lot. And B, it sort of teaches you to apply what you're learning. A lot of the times people will think that education is simply remembering something for a couple of weeks by the time you get to a test and then it's moving on to the next thing for your month long memory. Being able to go into these labs and be successful means being able to absorb what you're doing in the class and then towards the end of the semester, use that background knowledge to be able to apply it. And so I think the biggest thing for me is when being in a classroom is absorb as much as you possibly can and sort of make sure it makes sense to you. I see a lot of people in my classes will copy notes word for word, which works for some people because maybe in the moment they do not like feel the need to understand it and they'll go back and reread through their notes and try and like read it over and over again. But I feel like if I, what I do in class is when I can take something that the professor says and put it in my own words and then talk with them maybe after class or in their office hours and utilize the time with them away from class and sort of just confirm those things. That's what I find helps me learn best in the classroom. That's some great advice, Josh. Thank you. And, and that's going to lead to the, the, the next uh, question is, you know, what advice would you give a high school senior that is possibly entering their first year of, of college in, in regarding the importance of making this transition towards the end of their high school career throughout the summer and moving on to their first year in college or university? Yeah, don't freak out too much. Um, your summer after your senior year is obviously like the first time in a long time that you have literally nothing to worry about um, as regards to maybe like a job or something that you have for that summer. But um, I would say definitely don't wait until you get to college to realize that you're going to college. I remember when I went to orientation, probably in late July, that's when the switch sort of flipped to me where it's like, okay, maybe I start, you know, thinking about, what I want to do on there, or just not even thinking that advanced, just sort of preparing myself for that mental switch, because I knew something going in is that that's going to be when everybody starts to split up, which sounds kind of crappy. But if I feel like if you don't, what happens to a lot of people is they'll end up going to college, dropping out after a semester because they never really accepted that college lifestyle, that that was going to be the next stage in their life. And so being able towards the end of the summer, middle of August, say, all right, it's time to sort of move into this lifestyle helps you really find a place when you're there at college. Thank you so much for that, Josh. And, and, and it's so great to hear uh, it's going so well at U of M and, and, and welcome back again. Um, and thank you for joining uh, us and bringing that uh, advice to our panel uh, this evening. Well, I don't know where we go from here. What a what a great amount of information from Josh, Olivia, Cassie, and Bria, um, and all their different experiences at different colleges, universities, and, and then really, you know, how it's been since high school throughout their summer first year, and then almost to their senior years right now. Um, so we're going to open up the question and answer segment uh, for the audience. If you want to enter your questions into the chat, we'll read them out loud um, to the to the panelists. I actually already have a, a couple of questions that were sent uh, through the chat to me privately. And if the panelists would like to answer them, just unmute yourself and, and then uh, um, we'll just go on and get the questions answered one at a time. Um, I love this one because we didn't talk about it. What is it like being away from home and, and going to college? You know, what is it like, you know, it's away from home. You always hear that. Does anybody want to answer that? So everyone's experience is going to be different. Um, I know a lot of people say like, oh, I'm a homebody. Or there's some people that like actually love being away from home and then just going home to visit. Um, for me, I am definitely a homebody. I love going home. I love to home cook meals. So it was a huge shock to me. I still call my mom every day. Um, but it was, it got easier as time went on. And then you obviously have your Thanksgiving break, your Christmas break, your spring break, and you can choose to go home with those if you want to. My sister actually gave me really good advice when I first went away and it was not to go home until Thanksgiving. She said this, you can take it how you want it, but she said this because if you go home 
like really early, you're going to want to get in the pattern of going home on the weekends when in reality you could miss making friendships or just kind of hanging out, um, going around the town, figuring out what it's like. Um, so for me, yeah, I definitely wait until Thanksgiving every year because I would want to go home more. Um, but that might not work for everyone. So that's just my own experience. Uh, I completely agree with everything Olivia just said. It might be hard, especially your first year. But if you go home, there's like so much you can miss out on. And I'm not trying to bash my hometown friend group in any way, but they all went home every single weekend, their first semester of college, and they made no friends. And obviously I get it. Everyone gets homesick every once in a while. You just want to, you need a break. You want to go home. I've been there and I've done that, but it is so nice having, it's almost like a different life and you're just experiencing things that you've never done before. I love the west side of the state so much better than the east side. You know, I'll always be from Marine City, but oh my God, Grand Rapids is so fun. And the west side is just, you know, you've never really lived somewhere else um, on your own before. I mean, that's just a general statement. I don't know if you have or not, but it's just so cool being able to experience that. And I never want to go home. Like this summer, I don't want to go home. Well, and thank you for answering that as well. I have another question that just came through as a direct message to me. Would you still choose the Honor College again uh, if you could after your experience in it your first year? Um, this is like, I actually go back and forth a lot on this. I love the Honors College. I think it's very beneficial. There's a ton of opportunities for it. I am doing the Honors College for the full four years, but um, I know a lot of people, it just wasn't for them. And I think you kind of just have to try it out on your own. I really enjoy it. And I think that there's so many opportunities to come from it. Like I'm going to be a honors mentor coming this fall. So basically I'm going to kind of do what I'm doing here. I get to have a group of um, freshmen that are joining the honors college and I get to kind of basically talk to them about anything going on at Grand Valley and like help them, you know, acclimate to school, which was so beneficial for me when I joined because I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't eat when I got on campus until my honors mentor took me out to lunch, like, because I was so scared to go to the dining hall. <laughs> oh, well, yes. And I, and I appreciate you sharing that. Um, yeah. Cause it's a, it's a, it's a new life. It's a new scenery. It's an, you know, it's a new area and you got to get settled into that. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, it looks, Olivia, I'm going to pull you back up here because there's a couple questions that are coming through. Um, one uh, is, what are some good minors for education majors? Um, okay, so that's actually a tricky question. I was told, okay, so I was told if you minor in math, you'll probably get a job anywhere, but not to minor in anything that you don't want to teach. Because if you have that minor, you can be put in any, like you can be put in that subject, even if it's not your major. So like for me, since I'm a physical and health education major, I knew that I did not want to teach math. And I thought about taking math as my minor, um, just because I know that there's a lot of job openings. Um, I can't answer the question of what would be a good minor, because it's all about your personal preference. But anything subject wise, you can you can really take it wherever you want. Yeah, I'll follow up with that really quick, too, because it, and that is a question a lot for education majors. You know, you're going to your major, your major, obviously you can teach and get certified in to teach at, at specific grade levels. Secondary would be eighth through 12th grade. And then um, you have elementary certifications at or K through 12, um, as Olivia talked about earlier, but your minor also, you want to minor in something that you're interested in teaching, not really um, compared to other um, programs that you're just interested in because that would give you an opportunity to get a teaching job with that minor subject, let's say math and science, you'll be able to not only be hired for one of those as a teacher, maybe you can teach both of those subject areas at the school that you're hired in. So you would not be restricted to just teaching math classes. You could do also science or also history or English language arts. And I hope that kind of clarifies a little bit with your minor choice. Olivia, I'm going to pull you back up here because there's another question um, since you were just on is what should you be doing to prepare for education major classes? And I think that's a great point is when did you apply 
to become part of that program? And, and then did you have to apply? And what did that process look like? Uh, yes. Yeah, so I did have to apply. I actually applied after my first semester last year. Um, so my sophomore year, um, I came home in the winter and I applied. Um, preparation is honestly, I would suggest observing, um, write down things you like if you're going into education, like how, like your style of teaching, your style of learning, things that you've seen in your classroom that you like. That really helped me like trying to look back um, and figure out what style of teacher I want it to be. Cause you really don't know until you try it. Um, other preparation is just get comfortable speaking in front of people because it is awkward. Like when you go in front of a class, you could, if you're going into high school, you could be like a couple years older than them. So just be prepared um, to talk in front of a class and not to get uncomfortable with it because that's what you're there for. That's what you pay to go to school for. And they're going to respect you because you are an authority figure, even if you might not think so, because you're similar in age. Thank you so much for that answer. Uh, Bria, this one's coming to you. Um, I just wrote it down. It says, you know, you're going to the Culinary Institute in Michigan. Did you still apply for scholarships and did you receive any scholarships to help pay for that tuition? So, yes, I actually applied for a couple scholarships and I received one through the tech center. The counselors there, they helped me with that. But um, yeah, for that part, it's just like any other college where um, when you apply, you can see if you get a scholarship based on your GPA in high school and also like any other um, scholarships you can get from other companies. Thank you so much for answering that, Bria. All right. And, and, and I'm going to throw this back out first to Olivia and then to anybody that wants to answer it to around scholarships. So, Olivia, we had a, um, a question come in. You know, you went from Marysville High School to SC4 and then to Central Michigan. Uh, yeah. How did you apply for scholarships and how did you apply for the scholarships at Central Michigan if you went to SC4 first? OK, so the, the ones for SC4 were um, through like I got one through the Rotary Club. So it was just local town scholarships and then an athletic scholarship because I did play basketball there for a year. When I transferred to Central, it was a little bit different because Central does um, scholarships by GPA for you coming right out of high school. So you kind of have to dig a little bit into it to figure out like what the transfer scholarships are, but they do offer them. And it's also based on GPA, but it's based on college GPA. And it has nothing to do with like anything other than your college GPA. And then I think I wrote an essay and the scholarships will last me um, throughout my whole experience now. And you don't have to reapply for them. So you just get those based on your GPA from Central at least. Well, thank you. And, you know, that's a very confusing thing. And I think for a lot of seniors, um, whether they're, you know, thinking of going away right away or going to a community college or, you know, even transferring, which is really important to understand. Josh, did you apply to any scholarships in your senior year? Yeah, I got one just through um, Marysville High School. Um, as far as U of M went, I there's basically just you fill out your on your like application for your personal account, there's info that you can fill out um, regarding like academic record, as well as just like who you are as far as like personal things go. Um, and they award you them based on that. So haven't gotten any yet, but there's one more year. So we'll All see. Right. Well, it's, it, and we always say with scholarships too, is you got to apply to get them to be awarded them. So that's uh, some great advice, Josh. Thank you so much. Well, we're going to move on uh, to closing out the uh, evening event here with our webinar, um, but feel free to, to enter questions into the chat if they come up. And if we can't get them answered uh, now at the panelists, we'll be sure to get your questions answered um, in the future as you finish out your senior year. So um, please uh, keep a lookout for um, the senior to-do checklist for on um, the class of 2022 that will be published next week to help you and your family throughout the spring and summer with steps that are needed to be completed before next fall. On this list is the very important information regarding not only the FAFSA application, but what you should be doing as you make your decision coming up in May on the colleges and universities that you decide on decision days and send your financial information financial aid information to that financial aid department of that school, college, or trade school. As you can see in your screen right now, um, the financial aid deadline has been extended 
uh, for the uh, state of Michigan. And what that means is the deadline that was March 1st has been extended until May 1st from the, the original uh, deadline. Applications submitted by May 1st will still be given priority consideration to maximize students' access for scholarships such as the Michigan Competitive Scholarship and the Michigan Tuition Grant. It's also important to note that this is how you access the Pell Grant. And the Pell Grant um, is a free money that if you qualify for, helps you fund um, your education beyond high school. Um, a special note was put out by the National College Attainment um, Association I'm sorry, network, that last year, a lot of students did not or failed to complete their FAFSA application and $3.75 billion were left on the tables for students and their families to use to help fund their education. Here in Michigan, it was almost $89 million were left unused because you, you, uh, students did not complete their FAFSAs. If you need help, with your FAFSA or you're still undecided or have incomplete or multiple plans that you're considering before the year decision day, please look into your college advisors and ask them for help because they're there to help you. Um, our college advisors can help you sort through your options, navigate your current college process and make an informed decision before your graduation day. As you can see here on your screen, we're very lucky to have eight wonderful college advisors at our local high schools. This is their contact information if you've not met them yet. Um, they're there to help you with their applications, help you with the process as you enter this summer and your high school graduation date. Tonight was a first installment of a three-part spring series of uh, 2022. If you have younger siblings, family members, or friends that are currently juniors from the class of 2023, our next event on April 28th is for them to prepare for the next year of their senior year. And last but not least, our final event of 2022 school year is for the incoming freshman class, currently eighth graders, to support their transition to high school next fall. If you'd like to review the recording of this webinar or any of our previous events, visit our website at bwcan.org. There you'll find multiple resources and additional college and career information and previous virtual events and college stories. Also stay up to date and subscribe to our BW Can monthly newsletter that provides students and families with updated information, resources from St. Clair County Risa, TAC, BW Can, and our community and state partners. As always, you can stay connected with all our updates and information by following us on our social media platforms as well. Well, thank you again for following us uh, this evening. We look forward to seeing you at our next event. Um, I'm Nick Boudre from St. Clair County Risa. Uh, have a good evening. We'll see you soon.